Thanks for watching one of our messages today. My name is Caleb Combs and I'm the gathering pastor here at the river and we would love to connect with you. An easy way to do that is text River Connect to 97000 or you can visit our website, theriverchurch.cc for more information. If you'd like to financially contribute and give to the River Church, you can text an amount to 84321 or again, visit our website and click the giving tab. We hope you enjoy the message today. Good to be here this morning. Uh, we are going to be continuing our series in Proverbs. Uh, we're meeting different characters as we walk through the book of Proverbs. We're not necessarily doing this in chronological order. Uh, we're finding different characters that tend to pop up through the book of Proverbs. And we will look at those characters. We might relate to those characters. They might even be characters that we find within ourselves or our families. And so today's not going to be any different. We're going to be walking through uh, the, the person that is defined as the simple. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to Proverbs chapter 1. This is where we're going to begin. Uh, we were here at the very beginning of the series when we were walking through knowing who the Lord is. Right, And so we're going to just kind of start there, refresh our memories again, and walk through who... Proverbs defines or describes as the simple. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. I'm just going to read a few verses, get right in. I want to let you know ahead of time, I have a lot of passages that we're going to be walking through. There's going to be a ton of scriptures. And it's easy to get lost, uh, and you may get lost as we're turning through different pages. Uh, the, the scripture should be on the screen. If you're a note taker, let me just encourage you, write the reference and go back and look at it. Examine it. Walk through the text and explore what the text is saying. I encourage you to do that. But if you, you lose your spot or you miss a spot, just go ahead and look up at the screen. The text should be up there. Uh, I do want to warn you ahead of time we will be turning through uh, a lot of passages. I'll show you my, my Bible. I have all these references that we're going to be going through. So it'll be, it may be easier uh, for you to just follow along on the screen. So Proverbs chapter 1, I'm going to start right in verse 4. The passage says this, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understandeth or understands obtain guidance. I'm going to jump down to verse 7, and again, this is where we were at several weeks ago. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to walk through this, uh, this person, this character, the simple. Heavenly Father, man, I'm so excited to be here this morning. Lord, I need you this morning. Lord, give me strength. Give me clarity of speech. Walk with us. Be in this room, Lord. Have your spirit fill us and guide us as we walk through uh, understanding who the simple are and how that applies to our lives. Lord, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 4 there, you see it given very clearly. This is really the intro to the book of Proverbs. And we, we read through the reason Solomon wrote this book. And here he identifies two general categories. And we briefly talked about this in the very first uh, message of the series, the, the wise and the foolish. You see here in verse 5, it says, let the wise hear instruction. In verse 7, at the latter part of it, you see fools despise wisdom and instruction. And there's these two general categories but here in the beginning, he also identifies what I would call a third category, the simple. He says part of the reason he writes this book is to give prudence to the simple. That word prudence simply in the easiest way in our current vernacular means caution, to give a warning, if you will, to the simple. And then he associates the simple uh, shortly after that, and he says to give knowledge and discretion to the youth. You see, as we walk through this character, the simple, we're going to find that the simple is what I would define as the middle of the rotor. The guy that sits on the fence that doesn't pick a side one way or the other. He kind of he sits right there. He's simple. 
We often see this, and Solomon will do this multiple times through the book of Proverbs. He, he relates the simple with the youth. Because the youth, in some sense, haven't made their choices yet. They're about to pick a path in life. Either to follow the direction or the, the allure, if you will, or the deception of the foolish. Or be inclined to listen and hear the instruction and wisdom of the wise. So you see this character that sits in the middle. They're indecisive, if you will, in a sense. Or they have yet to walk through this. And so it might be easy for us to walk through and say, oh, this is the simple, and, and just leave it at that. And, and I was thinking through this word, the simple. Our culture almost has a tendency to, to think of the word simple as something we desire. Maybe you've heard this phrase, uh, I, I want to live the simple life. Right? I, I desire a simple life. Life is complicated a lot of times. And so the allure, in a lot of sense, is to live simpler. I mean, Mother Teresa even made that statement, right? Live simply so others may simply live, right? This is an expression we've heard. Uh, I was looking at some memes, and I don't mean to get too crazy with this, but this may be something that popped up on your Facebook, and you go, oh, yeah, that feels good. I like that. Simplicity is the source of beauty. Sounds great. I like that, right? We go there. Uh, you may not be a nerd like myself, but Bruce Lee even said this. If you don't know who Bruce Lee is, he's a uh, martial artist, all right? I grew up in Japan, so I know who Bruce Lee is. Not personally, but I, I definitely watched a lot of his movies. He even is quoted as saying this. Simplicity is the key to brilliance. And so there's this cultural uh, maybe way we understand simplicity or simpleness as something that's good. Let me go one step further. Even Paul in 2 Corinthians says this, chapter, 12, uh, or chapter 1, verse 12, he says, For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience, that we behave in the world with simplicity. So even Paul himself says this idea of living simply is something that he can boast about or, or talk about, right, in reference to his instructions to the Corinthians. So when we walk through the book of Proverbs and we're listening to what Solomon is trying to teach us about the simple, is he describing it in the same manner? So we're going to walk through how Solomon clearly articulates and instructs us who the simple are and what their, their result is, if you will, at the end of the day. What happens to the simple? What is the result of their their allure and the path that they pick. So one of the things that you see very, very quickly, if you'll turn to Proverbs chapter 1, back to Proverbs chapter 1, uh, verse 22, it says this. Solomon, in that same passage as he's giving us these instructions, he says this about the simple. He says, O simple, how long, O simple ones, will you live or love being simple? He then says, how long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? See, one of the things that we see Solomon teaching us is that simple, the people who are in the, that path, if you will, that, 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 that position of being the simple, they enjoy being there. Maybe part of that's because they don't know the end result of one path versus another. So they'll just sit here and they'll, they'll not make a decision. They'll look over and see the foolish side, and I'm not calling anybody over here foolish. I'm just picking left and right, okay? So, so uh, they'll look at the foolish side and say, I wonder what happens to them. Or they'll look over to the wise side and say, hey, I wonder how their life ends up happening or what it becomes. And they don't know the end results. And so they sit without making a choice or a commitment to follow or walk in one way or the other. I want to walk through very, very quickly, hopefully, uh, and to let you know that they can't just sit and be the simple. After time passes, over a period of time, inevitably, they will no longer be called the simple. They will be identified as either the foolish or the wise. The simple, over time, even though they think they're sitting in the neutral ground, on the fence, so to speak, will ultimately end up being in one or the other category. 
And we'll see through this how their decisions, the way they made choices, how they were enticed, how they were even deceived and allured into a direction versus listening and adhering to counsel. They ultimately find themselves, though they think they're sitting in the, the, the middle ground, will find themselves in one camp or the other, so to speak. And I love that Proverbs uh, is quick to identify and help us know the actual definition of Solomon's definition of the simple versus what we may have seen as simple life. Solomon is very keen to give us instruction on this. In uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15, he says this. And I would, if you like to write in your Bibles, mark this as the definition for the simple, according to, to Proverbs. He says this, the simple believes everything. But the prudent gives thought to his steps. The prudent there would be the one who is cautious, gives thought to his steps. One who is wise is cautious or is prudent and turns away from evil. But a fool is reckless and careless. See, right there Solomon gives us this definition of the simple. They believe everything. And when you are sitting in the middle of the road and you're looking at maybe the allure of the foolish, and we'll walk through what that looks like versus the the instruction and the wisdom that comes from the wise, you're easily swung swung one side to the other. You might go, oh, man, that looks really appealing. I'm going to go check that out. And then you find out what that leads to, the foolish decisions. I mean, if you've lived life uh, and you're not a young person, (laughs) right, you know this. Like, oh, man, I've been deceived. I've been tricked, and you, you know what that feels like. And so you might be saying, well, man, this is a great message for the youth, Pastor John. This is a good message for the youth. And yes, it is. And parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, we ought to be teaching our children, our youth, our young ones, the importance of making wise decisions and learning how to be cautious and hearing the warnings that come from the decisions that they make. But unfortunately, it doesn't stop just for the youth. We as adults, we still make decisions sometimes just as the simple do. And I want to walk through some of the application ahead of time so that as we're walking through this, you can examine in your own life some of the areas that this may be applicable to you. Right? We're going to walk through some of the the ways the simple have been tricked or, or deceived, if you will, allured even. In a way. And, and we can walk through this and see how, oh man, this is not just for the youth. In fact, I would say this this is for every single person in the room or watching online. Because ultimately, we're gonna find and identify that each and every one of us have aspects in our life that is just like the simple. We, we believe, in essence, everything that the allure to sin, the allure that the foolish person gives us, and we, we believe it. Instead of heeding and listening to the counsel of the wise, and they're, they're completely contrary. So some of the ways in which I uh, uh, see this, this working out, this way, in fact, we're in chapter 14, if you allow me. Uh, verse 18 says this, the simple inherit folly. They inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Again, Solomon's separating that inevitably you're going to be in one or the other of these camps. The folly, you're going to inherit it. You're going to become, if you are sitting in the simple person's position right now, you're going to become identified with the folly or the foolish versus being prudent and wise and listening and paying attention to the caution. You will gain knowledge. So here are some of the ways that I see the application. You see, uh, the simple are persuaded Another word might be they are influenced because they believe everything. They, they are persuaded or they're influenced. You might even say they are ignorant. They don't know any better yet. Okay, this is the simple. And in like manner, sin also persuades. Sin also deceives. Leads us to a path that ultimately ends up in destruction. So the application is, is where in your life have you allowed sin to enter? 
Where have you allowed sin to be a part of your life as we walk through what happens to the simple when they pay attention or listen to the foolish versus pay attention and listen to the wise? There is sin in your life that you are maybe thinking of it in, in the terms of the simple. You're just believing that it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. It's not really going to hurt anybody. This isn't a problem. See, these are the things that sin tries to deceive us with and convince us that we're okay. Come on, let's go this way. Versus the warnings and the cautions that the wise tries to scream and tell us, hey, don't do that. Be careful, be cautious. That's a problem if you go down that road. We see this as adults and maybe even as grandparents where we, we have this yearning for the youth or the young. Say, man, I've walked this road. It's hard. It's not fun. It's not pleasant. We don't want you to endure this. Please don't walk this way because it's going to lead to hurt and pain. We see this. And so the plea that Solomon has in, in Proverbs is this to the simple. You have a choice. You have a path that you're going to walk. The other application, and this may, may apply, may not apply, is this aspect of the simple being indecisive. Not making a choice. Not choosing. And I'm like, man, how have I lived this out? And really, the place that I saw this, some of the early years of my life as a husband, as a father, was really in the family. Did I make a commitment, and this is, you know, I talked about getting punched in the face up at men's retreat. I'm not trying to re regurgitate that or redo that here. But as a father in the family, have I made a commitment to listen to the word of God? Or have I kind of chosen to sit in the middle of the road? Not making a commitment one way or the other. Moms, you can find yourself maybe in that same boat where you haven't made a commitment Choosing to honor the word of God in your life and teach that to your kids. And you're just like, I'm just going to sit in the middle. It's just going to be where I sit. And you, you're allowed to be swayed one way or the other. So this is some of the application that I see where the simple play a part in our life. And how we have to examine uh, our lives and take a decision and look internally to see how am I living as the simple. As the simple in the book of Proverbs. And so we're going to walk through. And we're going to start in uh, Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 7. No, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. It says this. This is Solomon sitting in his, uh, you would say his, uh, I don't know if he had a castle or not. The place of his dwelling, right, where he could see the town, see, see oversee the city. I don't know if it was a castle or if it was just a place where he, he was look, looking. It says this, for at the window of my house, I have looked out through my lattice, and I have seen among the simple. I have perceived, again, you see the connection there, among the youth, a young man lacking in sense. Passing along the street near her corner, taking the road to her house in the twilight, in the evening, at the time of night, in darkness. Here, Solomon is setting up the fact that the simple, he sees the simple, and he sees how the simple is persuaded, if you will. In this chapter, and we're going to talk about who he's talking about in later weeks, but it's the adulterous woman. And he sees this young lad walking in her path. Being persuaded, and he will go through that in coming weeks, but we see the result of what happens. And I want to show that to you. If you'll jump down to verses 22 and 23, you'll see what happens to this young man. And this is not just a young man's story. I want to make sure you understand that. Men, understand that what is happening to this young man, the path that he is persuaded to walk in, ends up leading him someplace. The end of verse, uh, at, the end, at the beginning of verse 22, it says this. When you, I'm sorry, I was on the wrong chapter. Verse 22. Uh, All at once, he follows her. This young man follows her. And as an ox goes to the slaughter, as the stag is caught fast, till an arrow pierces its liver, just as a bird rushes into a snare, he did not know what it would cost him. What it would cost him his own life, 
right? It leads to, and further down in the chapter, you'll see that it is his death that is the result of where he is walking, the snare of the adulterous woman. Unfortunately, in our era, this is no longer just an issue with men. Pornography, adultery, fornication, lewd living. I mean, it's blasted all over our televisions anymore. And it's not just a matter that the youth have to deal with. Men have to deal with this. Young ladies have to deal with this. Women have to deal with this. This is prevalent in all of our society. And here we see Solomon teaching. And he's using the youth as a, as a correlation because the youth don't know any better. They're ignorant in a sense. They don't know the hardships that will come if they walk in this path along with the adulterous woman. The death, the destruction that happens. Job Job chapter 5 correlates the very connection that I'm trying to make here. In Job chapter 5 and verse 2 he says this, Surely vexation kills the fool and jealousy slays the simple. Surely, surely vexation kills the fool and jealousy slays the simple. The correlation here is this, the simple who think they're safe, who think they're not making a decision one way or the other, is connected, just as in Job, just as Solomon does, he connects them that one day, if you think you're okay, you think you're walking, you're fine, you're going to end up with the same result as the foolish, the death, the slain. Just as Job said there and connected the fool with the simple, they both have the same end result. In Romans, Paul gives us these instructions as he's teaching the Roman church. He says this in verse 18 of chapter 16. For such a person, this is a person that causes division in a church, but this is really, and I, I, I'll walk through this. It says this, for such a person, persons do not serve our Lord Christ. That's the fool or the foolish. But their own appetite. In other words, the foolish is all about themselves. They're very selfish. And the way that they persuade, if you will, or deceive others is this. And it is by smooth talk and flattery that they deceive the hearts of the naive. That word naive is the same word as the simple. This is how fools deceive. This is how the the trickery, if you will, is given to the simple who walk in a path. They, They are convinced of flattery. They are convinced of uh smooth conversation or alluring conversation. That's the poll. Hey, it's okay to walk in this manner. You'll be all right. It's just for a little bit. You can apply that to multiple things. It can be drugs, alcohol, sex, money, work. Man, I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I'm providing for my family and I'm ignoring my responsibilities at home. It's a good thing. That's all right. You're doing a good thing. The flattery, the allure. Hey, this is just, and I've been there, and I'm not saying this as somebody that's ignorant to this. The allure to drugs is real. It's just one time. It's just one hit. It's all right. It'll be okay. It won't hurt anybody else. It's just you. The deception that comes in the allure of the fool. He continues in contrast in verse 19, and he says this. Uh, For your obedience, this is Paul speaking to the Roman church, your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise. The contrast, again, from the foolish to the wise. And what does he say? He wants you to be wise as to what is good and innocent versus that compared to that which is evil or to that what is evil. Paul is setting up to the Roman church to know these things. Know what is good and innocent. Know what is evil. This is the very, very same plea that Solomon made in 1 Kings chapter 3 when wisdom was given to him. He said to God, I want to know how to discern between right and wrong. And the simple, though they think they're not making a choice or they're choosing to be noncommittal, are choosing their ignorance to knowing which is right and what is wrong. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11 says this in continuation to what Paul was teaching the church. He says this, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning. You see how he made that connection? The very devil himself uses the same tools the fool does to deceive with cunning or flattery. And Paul's concern to the church in 2 Corinthians is this, that your thoughts will be led astray. Going down the wrong path, if you will. We'll be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Paul points us out that the devil's tool is this tool of flattery, cunningness, deception. And if you're walking in the path of the simple, whether it's sin in your life or non-committal to the things of God, the warning, the caution is that there is a direction that you who are being led by the foolish will end up. You will be deceived. You will be tricked. He's telling us this right in his word, God's word. The result of walking as a simple person and being allured by the fool is ultimately death and destruction. We see this in so many different ways. The church is not exempt from this. We've seen pastors who should know better make wrong decisions and cause utter chaos and destruction in God's people. It's not fun to talk about as a pastor. I wish it wasn't the case. But it, pastors aren't exempt from it. And so we have to be very cautious and keen as we listen and look at God's word, recognizing, hey, there are parts in my life that I've been operating just simply, as a simple person whether it's how we deal with certain sins in our life or whether it's the fact that I haven't made a commitment or a choice. I'm just kind of sitting on the fence, so to speak. The good news is this, and I love this. In Proverbs chapter 21, he says this. When a scoffer is punished, the simple becomes wise. When a wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. The hope there. This is the good news to the message. I'm not, I'm not going to leave you with just getting punched in the face. <laughs> There's good news, right? And that's this, that the simple have the ability to become wise. We see that in Proverbs 21. So we're going to walk through a little bit of what the wise teaches and how the wise teach us and what they're trying to teach us and how we can learn from what the wise is trying to tell us, the simple. I hope I've made that clear that we are all in some way, shape, or form operating as the simple. If you're a parent and you haven't made the choice to teach your kids or root your kids in the word of God, you're kind of sitting on the fence. That's something you have to make a choice on. Or inevitably one day down the road you're going to find that you were sitting in the camp of the fool or the wise. So let's look in Proverbs chapter 9 what the wise say. Proverbs chapter 9 says this. It says to the simple, leave your simple ways. In other words, you have a choice. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Walk in the way of insight. In that, that verse, I, after the first phrase, I say you have a choice. And after the second part, after it says uh, leave your simple ways, that's a choice. Solomon is saying you have a choice. You can leave your simple ways, whether it's your approach to sin or your approach to how you're choosing to commit to the things of God or not. You have a choice. And then when he says, walk in the way of insight, I can hear Solomon saying, choose this path. Choose this path. In fact, we go back to Proverbs chapter 1 and we get to hear the way wisdom speaks. Proverbs chapter 1 and verses 20 through 23, it says this, Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the market, she raises her voice. At the head of a noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. And we read this earlier, and it says this, How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing? And fools hate knowledge. You see, wisdom is not subtle. It's not a mystery. It's not something we can't know. In fact, mystery is crying out. 
loud over the market tree. She's trying to raise her voice so we're not missing the warnings and the caution. And I love this next verse, and I want you to see this because it's so powerful. In verse 23, it says this, If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Wow. Man. See, this is, maybe you're sitting here and you're like, man, dude, I've already walked in the way of the fool. I've already taken that path. What am I supposed to do? I love that Proverbs gives us the answer. He says, if you turn at my reproof, that reproof is, is correction, right? It's, it's a recognition of, oh, this is the wrong way. I need to turn and go a different direction. Because I know where this one goes now. I'm no longer operating as the simple. I know I'm operating as the fool. And I don't want to end up where the fool ends up, which is death and destruction and being slain. So here Solomon says, turn at my reproof. Turn at the instruction that you hear from God's word and see where that takes you. And he promises this, and I love that he promises this. He promises that he, and that he is the person of God will pour out his spirit to you. And he promises that as you read and will work through his instructions and his teachings, that he will make his words known. That means he'll make his words make sense to you. So you understand his instructions so that you're not operating in this area of naivety. I don't know. God will tell us what is right and what is wrong. He makes that promise for us here in the very first chapter. One of the things that as I was looking through this that I find to be very amazing. So Solomon learned from his father. His father was King David. If you don't know this about King David, King David wrote a lot of psalms or songs in the book of Psalm. So I started to look through what some of his teachings were regarding the simple. And it's very encouraging. And I want to show this to you. Psalms 119 verses 129 through 132 say this. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. Here it is, circled this, this is so powerful. The unfolding of your word gives light. The opening of God's word gives light, insight. And the next verse, it says this. It imparts understanding to the simple. It helps the simple know where to go, which way is right and which way is wrong. Verse 31 says this, I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me as your ways with those who love your name. Psalms 119, I'm going to carry through with this. This is another teaching of King David to his son. I guarantee you Solomon would have heard these teachings. All Solomon is doing is repeating what his father taught him, King David. Ultimately what God taught him. Psalms 19 verses 7 through 10 says this, The law of the Lord is perfect. I love this next part. Reviving the soul. Man, does that not pump you up? Listen, if you've already been deceived, if you've already been tricked and fooled about how the simple walk and the path that that allure, there is a way to be revived. Your very soul, the, the hurt, the pain that comes from being fooled and walking in the way of the fool. King David in Psalms 19 tells us that the way to do that is through the word of God. He continues and he says this, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. There's that promise again. The wise, making the simple wise, right? We can do this. (laughs) We're not left without help or, or knowing what is truth or knowing which direction to walk. We're given hope. We don't have to be deceived. The caution, the warning that comes from walking in the path of the fool is clearly given. God's word gives us that instruction. His promise is that when we reprove, we turn our ways and we turn to him, that he will pour his spirit and he will make God's word make sense to us. 
right? Without the Lord, reading through the Bible may be confusing and difficult, but God promises that he will help us know it. Let me continue. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. Have you ever been brokenhearted? Have you ever been deceived by what sin does in your life? Have you felt the brokenness of sin? Thinking there is no more hope? The word of God, God's commandments, his very law is the source of the rejoicing of our hearts. The commandment of the Lord is pure. This correlates directly with 2 Corinthians The very thing that Paul was concerned the church would be deceived by the the cunningness of the devil. The pure devotion to Christ. Here he says the commandments of the Lord is pure. It enlightens the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. I don't know if you're starting to figure this out. David's saying a lot of what Proverbs says. (laughs) Solomon was just saying stuff his dad had probably taught him through the word of God. He says even that that the fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true or are right and righteous altogether. And I want you to see this. More to be desired are they than gold. Even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. This is, a, this is almost verbatim quoted in Proverbs 16, verse 16. Proverbs 16, verse 16 says this. How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Here Solomon in Proverbs makes a direct correlation to wisdom If you go back to Psalms 19 and look at how Psalms 19 describes the source, the thing that is to be desired is the word of God. Listen, if you've walked in the path of the simple, if you're young and you're trying to figure out how do I make right choices, the answer is given to us in the word of God. If you've walked in the path of the fool, the answer to how to turn and get away is in the word of God. He promises us, and I love this, and I want to read this, and this will be the last verse that I read. Psalms 116 says this, Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Our God is merciful. Man, circle those two words. The grace and mercy of God. Man, is that powerful. If you've walked in the path of the fool, you've made poor choices, you haven't committed to the things of the wise, the the word of God in your family, in your home, in your own life, the instruction is there. You might be walking right now thinking, I'm okay, I'm I'm just in the middle, of. I haven't made a decision, I'm still trying to figure this out, that's okay. But there is a path that you will end up walking. One will be considered the path of the fool. Another will be if you are obedient and listen to the words and the instructions that come from God. As he continues, I love this in verse uh, Psalms 116. He says this in verse uh, 6. When I was brought low. How many of you have been brought low by the deception of sin? I know I have. When I was brought low, he saved me. That's powerful. And if you've experienced that and you know what you've been saved from, man. If you've walked that path of the fool and you know where that path leads you. To hear that somebody still cares for you, desires you, and wants to bring you back. That's who Jesus is. That's what he promises. Verse 7, return, O my soul, to your rest. The peace of God. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death. You have saved me from the end result of the foolish path, which is death. You've saved me. And he continues and he says, you have saved me. You have delivered me, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Verse 9, and I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. That's right. It's totally different. It's opposite spectrums. The foolish path leads to death. 
When we turn and change and we look to who Jesus is, we look at his word, the promise is, is he will save us, pull us away from the path of death, and lead us into a path of life. That's powerful stuff. And so today, as we wrap it up, man, my challenge to you is just simply this. Examine your life. Look at where you have been deceived and you've been walking in the path of the simple where you have allowed sins in your life that you know don't belong there, that you know will end up leading to a life of destruction that can look different for different people. Maybe you're here today and you just have said, man, I've just been sitting on the fence. I haven't made a choice one way or the other. I haven't chosen to listen to God and follow his steps and his path, the way of the wise. I've just, just kind of non-committal, if you will. Man, I just challenge you to make a commitment to follow after Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, man, thank you so much for the instruction that you give us in Proverbs about the simple. Lord, I have walked. And sometimes even in my life now, I still am allured by the way the foolish pulls me and I operate as the simple. Lord, thank you for making promises to me that you will pull me out of the way of death. Thank you for showing me in your word how to discern what is right and what is wrong for my life. Lord, I ask that you pour your spirit out in me and all those here, that we will be wise and listen to your instructions. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.